So we're going to go into how to create and format a Google Doc. Once you have your Google account and you're signed in, up at the top you have your different choices, mail, calendar, doc, sites, and also under more depending where you have Google. So if you click on docs, what it takes you to is your home screen. And under here is the create menu where you can create the different kind of docs you want. So you can create doc, presentation, form, drawing, collection. We'll get to all those. So you can click on create a new doc and it basically brings you to this document interface. Now, if you have used Word or any kind of word processor, all these tools and toolbars should look familiar to you. Here's where you can name your doc. You click on Untitled Document, it opens up, and you can name your document. I'm just going to call it Practice Doc for Class. And then click OK. You will see Practice Doc, oops, faux class. I can edit that for class. All the menu choices are exactly the same. If you aren't sure what one of the buttons does, just click your cursor, click your cursor over it and don't click and it'll show you in a little window underneath what it exactly does. So if you want to type something in, it's just like when you type something in in any kind of word processor. I want to change the font, I can highlight it. Here's my font list. Here's size, bold, italic, underline, the text color itself. Here's the background color of the text. All those different features. We'll talk about links in a minute and inserting images in a minute. Numbered lists, indenting, your alignment, your line spacing, all the different things that you want to do. Notice it says it's saving right here. Every time, it says right here, every change you make is automatically saved. So that's a great thing. You do not have to worry about saving it. If you want to rename your document, you can click right here and rename the document. It will rename the document, not make a copy. Now if you created some kind of template and you wanted to make a copy or you create a document and you don't want to make a template but you just want to adjust something, if you go to file and you go make a copy, and we'll talk about document collaborators. So if you shared the document with someone and if you don't understand that, you will soon. If you click OK, it says copy for practice document and if I go to my document list by going to documents I will see that I have both. I have practice document and copy for practice document. So when you do a copy it creates a copy and then you can rename it. So I could name this practice document for class 2. Okay, So you've got renaming, copying creates a copy. It's not a template, it just creates a copy. I hope you're with me so far. So once your picture is inserted, there's a couple things you can do. And if you aren't familiar with editing pictures, if you are, it's the same. Corners, you can drag in and drag out. If you want to change the alignment, you can just use the alignment tools to change the alignment. If you want to get rid of the picture, you can go to edit, you can cut it, you can copy it, you can paste it. All those different things that you can normally do to a picture works the same exact here. There's also the text wrapping down at the bottom. This is right now in line with text and you can choose fixed position. Do I know exactly what those mean? No, not particularly. <laughs> but you can play with them. I've never been a really good text wrapper. So another thing you can insert besides pictures is a table. So if you go to table and pick insert table, you have the choice. You can pick how many columns, and it goes out to 20, I guess. How many rows, goes down to 20, and there's your table. You can do all the different formatting things you can of your table if you want. You can type in it. I notice it's picking up my same font as I had done before, so I can change that if I want to. Alignment works the same way in a cell. You can change the alignment. Um, you can type a bunch of things. You can change the alignment of one cell or the alignment of two cells. Just remember, it's a computer and you have to tell the computer what you want it to do first. 
Anything you want to really do that's related to the table, go to table. There's where you can insert row above, you can insert the row below, insert a column to the left, you can delete a row. If you're deleting, make sure your cursor is in the row or column you want to delete. So here's my cursor, and if I go delete column, that column is now gone. If I click my cursor here and do delete row, that row is gone. If you want to do anything to whole table, you can do table properties. And you have all these different features. A border on a table, you can make the background color of a table that, you can do the alignment in here, and you can play with a column width. So that's basically it when it comes to the table. Now, adding a link basically means you're linking something in your image to, in your document, to something else. And you can make a word a link, you can make an image a link, so I'm just going to pick an image, let it upload, and I'll show you. So just say I want to make this type in something a link. I could highlight it up to insert and link. There's all these other things that I'm not going to go through in the insert menu, but that you can play with an equation, a drawing. Here's a way to put in a comment, which I will show you um, when we're talking later about different things, a header, a footer, a table of contents. But for here, insert the image, I mean, sorry, insert a link. And the text to display is what text I highlighted, the word type. So I can make it a web address, an email address, so just say I'm just going to do Google. So you either need to know the address, and I can hit test this link to see what it takes me to. If you don't know the link and you're exactly by heart, go to the website, click on the link to select it, then right click and copy it, then you can come back and you can right click or control V or command V and paste the link in here. So either you need to know the exact link or you need to go out and copy and paste it and click OK. There you can see it there. My word type is now highlighted and underlined in blue. I click on it. It takes me to Google. Awesome. You want to make a picture link? I'm going to make this eagle a little bit smaller because he's kind of big. So if you want to make an image a link, once again, select it. Tell the computer what you want. I don't know what link I'm going to go to, so I'm going to go out and try to find a page about eagles. So I found this eagle website with webcams. I want to highlight the whole link, right click to copy it, or control C or command C if you're on a Mac. I'll go back to my document, click on my bird to select it, I want to insert, so I got to insert, and I want to insert a link. So I go to link, and now it shows an asterisk. That's just showing you've selected something because there's no text to display. It's the picture. I right click and I paste, and I can test this link, and it takes me to the Eagle Cam. And then when I'm happy with it, I can click OK. And now you can see at the bottom, you don't get the hand like you do when you're on the web, but you get a link. So if I go like this, when I go out and I put click on it, you can see you can see the link where you can click and then you can go check out the Eagles. A few other things you might want to know. Under format, you also have bold, italic, underline, the paragraph styles if you want to play with alignment, line spacing. So it's another way of getting at all the tools on the toolbar. Also, under file, you can download it, so if you have a document, and this is different um, than saving. You don't notice there is no save, that's because it's automatically saving to your Google account. If you want to download it onto your computer and take it out of Google Docs, so you can email it to someone, um, or I'm not sure, but you can. If you do download as, you can download it as a PDF file, which is open in Adobe Acrobat. Everybody has it, so if you're not sure if someone has a Word program and you don't need them to edit it, because PDFs are not editable unless you have the right program. You could do an RTXF, which is a rich text format. It's just a kind of, of text document. You can do it as text, or you could do it as a Word document. 
I don't know what ODT is. I could look it up. Um, you can also download it as an HTML file, kind of a web page, but you usually won't do that. You can go under page setup, and this is where you can change the portrait, the landscape, change your margins. You can here is where you can also change the background color of the page if you wanted to know how to do that. It's kind of hidden under page setup, background color. Then printing is printing. You got to make sure you're connected to a printer, but your print interface. It'll ask you, do you want to open or save it? So when you go to print it, it's going to print as a PDF version, okay? Which really makes no difference to you because you're printing it. So that's really all you have to do. It's going to make you save it somewhere, which is fine. You can open it if you want to see what it's going to look like in a PDF version and print it from there. So that's the only thing you really need to know. When you go to file and print, you won't initially um, see your print page because it'll be saying, well, do you want to open it or do you want to save it? Then you can save it and you can go and open it wherever you saved it. So when you're saving it, make sure you know where you're saving it so you can go to find it. Um, usually on Macs, it defaults to your download folder. So does it on your PC. And you can also, on the PC, it allows you to open the folder, and then I can see it. There's my practice document for class, and I'll just print it. So those are your basics. Um, any questions, you can ask me. It's pretty straightforward. Sorry, one more thing I forgot to show you about some basics. It's the uploading of Docs. If So if you already have a document and you want to upload it into your Google Docs, something you've saved on your computer, in a home folder, on a flash drive, Next to create, here's the upload. And basically, you can go to Upload Files, and you can upload whatever type of file you want. A, you can an image file, a Word document. I'm not sure what I, if I have anything on here to upload. So we're just going to upload um, for now. We're just going to upload a, a, a picture. So you find the file you want to upload, and you click on it, and you click Open. Now, you do have these choices. Set your preferences for uploading files. They'll plow these settings to any of them Google Docs. Convert documents, presentations, and drawings to a corresponding Google Doc format. I do recommend doing this if you're going to use this in Google Docs. If you want to be able to edit, choose this. Now, if you want, um, it's a PDF file and convert the text from a PDF file and image files to Google Docs, you can check that off. Now, you're not going to see anything from me right now. You don't have to convert your documents if you want to leave them as Word and you're just using it as a storage place. But I, if you want to edit something in, in Google Docs, do the conversion. So all you have to do is click Start Upload. It shows you that it's doing it. It's finished. And there's my picture with the chrysanthemum JPEG. So once again, you can upload documents that you already have into Google Docs by using this upload. Here's where you can ch choose the settings that you want, all that good stuff. You also have enable folder upload. Oh, but my browser doesn't support the entire uploading. I need a Chrome browser. So you can upload entire folders. You just have to install Chrome. And I don't have Chrome, but if you want to try it, try it.